put it back on. Okay, craving. Um, and the cra craving for God and the craving for food, uh, which is very much uh, part of my story. Um, you know, at the, at the end stage food addiction, I was a food addict, but people can be addicted to alcohol, drugs, uh, all kinds of things, same thing. It was like, um, uh, in the beginning, it's like one has the food or the addiction and there's a lot of relief from this feeling of um, uh, not fitting in or feeling a, a hole in the soul or darkness or self-hatred. Or, or whatever it is. I mean, I think on the course level, we'd call it separation anxiety, you know, um, and trying to find a solution for feeling separated, uh, the experience of separation. But that's another way we could call it the whole soul. And the, in the beginning, the food, there was a feeling of, uh, of not fitting in, of self-hatred, and the food would give comfort in the early years. But later on, I was eating for oblivion. Uh, I was just eating to uh, escape this world and just wanted to eat to get an escape and not to lose consciousness, uh, which I know many addicts get to. They're just trying to get it to escape the world now because it's too painful. And, and it's almost like a monstrous thing takes you over and there, there's no power. And sometimes you're even doing the thing and it's not giving any relief, but you're just in constant hell, but you keep doing it. Uh, just having more and more of the food or whatever it is that you think will uh, relieve that suffering. Uh, you're monstrously driven. That, that's actually true. So these are attractor fields. So as the, as the light of consciousness fades because the ego is uh, more inflated, then you get taken over by these addictive attractor fields which, which run you. They're like fields of energy which run you. So you can't, there's no light in of light of consciousness or sanity left. And it's like you just eat the next donut and the next donut, and then you'll go to the buffet restaurant with unlimited amounts of food and carry on eating, uh, literally trying to, not n consciously, but unconsciously com committing suicide and obliterating life and existence. Because that seems sort of like a, a way to escape, uh, escape hell. So... So one is being driven, and you could say driven by the thoughts and the craving energy. Uh, the, that's the energy of desire or craving, uh, which just orchestrates. Uh, you could say, in truth, uh, you could say like, oh, I, I'm a person with my um, separated identity. You know, I'm Sabir and you're someone else. But in truth, there's collective energies, and you just tune into these collective addictive energies, and then these thoughts come in. You're picking from radio addiction, and these energies are monstrously driving you to carry on eating, or it could be drinking, or whatever it is, uh, into, into oblivion. So, as the energy takes you over, and you do, you do get this kind of oblivion, uh, you can, or, or non-existence. They are, um, the thing with that, though, is that it's a field of anti-life. Uh, so it's, it's destroying, it's destroying, uh, it's, de it's anti-life because why? Because, uh, and I think, you know, one of the things that is really illuminating is, uh, I believe it came from Ramana Maharishi, which is uh, when the, you see, uh, it's very, very uh, easy to sort of visualize it. Like if, if there's a light bulb, like if there's a light bulb, um, and the light, and there's nothing in front of it, there's no, there's no, no cloud or no curtain in front of it, it would just be constant light. You know, there'd be constant happiness in every moment. It's like, or the sun is a good one, clouds, sun, sun and clouds. So if there was no clouds in the sky, then um, it would just be sunny nonstop at a constant sun. But as soon as you have clouds, clouds can be like thoughts or programs or cravings. Because a thought is a limited thing. So it wants something limited. You know, uh, or like a limited idea is if I'm thin, I'll be happy. Or a limited thought, if I could eat, if I can find another donut, I'll be happy. Or, and a craving is a thing of, I'm not, there's, there's a feeling of uh, separation right now. And the projection that if I get something in the future, or use something in the future, then that will, um, that will fix the whole. So it's a program run by an energy. The energy of addiction is, not a, is, is lack, because it's not enough. Right now, right now not, there is not infinite presence and light. It's a feeling like, I need a donut. 
want, or I need a bottle, or I need a partner, or I need to be successful. So that thought, which is a li something limited. So when you, what, what Ramana said is, when you have a, th when you have a thought, and the thought is for something, then um, when you get, and the more you have, when it's an obsession or a meaningful thought or an addiction, like for food or for alcohol or whatever it is, or partner, or to save somebody or rescue someone, it doesn't really matter what the thought is for, mm -hmm. then as soon as you get the thing that you want, the ego shuts up for a, for a few seconds and you get, you get a glimpse of the sun, you know, but now you're trapped in an illusion of addiction because you think you eat the donut and you were, you're, ha you're in the craving energy for the donut or you're in the craving energy for the vodka or you're in the craving energy for a partner and you, uh, and you get the thing and then suddenly you get a, a temporary high. You get a glimpse of the sun and that's because the ego plays dead for very cleverly, it plays dead for 10 seconds and goes silent and you connect to the sun. You know, the, like the sun is always here, but the, the sun doesn't come from anything outside in the world. You know, that's the, that's the whole purpose of the ego, is to create this illusionary chase in the world for, if I could just have another donut, then I would get another glimpse of the sun. And if I could eat, you know, eventually it was like, if I could eat donuts non-stop and have a non-exist, a never-ending supply of donuts, then I might be able to experience the sun non-stop. You know, or you know, if I could, um, if I could get this girl to say I love me non-stop, then that would fill the hole, or whatever it is. So it becomes like you try and control, or get more of this stuff to get these temporary glimpses. And those temporary glimpses, you know, like Romana says, like if I want a donut and I eat a donut, the high, the high I get is the ego shutting up, and I experience a spiritual experience of, of the sun. Now Hawkins, uh, in his research, was even better because he had muscle testing research. So he said something which is really illuminating if you look at his work on addiction. Like, generally in the collective, when we, we have collective belief systems around different things in the world, and they block off certain percentages of the ego, uh, which is really, really interesting. So it's like, you know, we, we call a certain drug ecstasy. Uh, or, uh, and there's certain different types of food, there's sugar, there's various things, there's the high of, a, of the honeymoon period with a new relationship. So we have all of these things in the collective consciousness. And each of these things are blocking off a percentage of the ego when we, we go within the, it's like the collective illusion, we all agree, like if we take a proper ecstasy pill in, um, basically it shuts off enough of the ego so we get exposed to God, so that we feel like God's ecstasy. It doesn't actually come from the tablet, but it silences the ego so much that we get the ecstasy of God, a glimpse of it, but then, you know, you might want another pill or whatever it is. Now, or with a donut, you know, it's more like it gives you a mellow feeling. You feel more chilled and dosed out or comforted or something. So that then would be blocking less of the ego, something that would give you ecstasy, or something would give you like an absolute high so that you feel at one with the world and in and absolute love. I don't... I didn't take drugs, but I can get, I can experience what it's like because I've had so many spiritual experiences. Something that would just wipe out the ego and you feel instant bliss and oneness. If so, you know, you take that pill, whatever it is, and then you, and then you get that experience, and that would be a God experience. But now your ego goes, look, you took the pill and you felt like this God, God experience. So now you don't feel it. It's wearing off. Just take another pill. Or the donut. I was feeling comforted, but it was, it's been three days since I had a donut, so I need another donut. Or, oh, the last time I had a girlfriend, I felt happy on, on the first five dates, and so, but now it's wearing off. But I need a new girlfriend that will keep me happy forever. And that one, so they all stop working because there isn't anything out there that, uh, because they're all, you see the ego entrapment and the craving. Because if you're in craving and you take something and you get it, you're reinforcing, uh, the, you're reinforcing the illusory idea that, oh, I need another donut. So you have the thought and you act on the craving energy and you get a temporary hit of God. And then you reinforce that play again for the next donut and you run on this. So you're never going to be happy because actually, because you're chasing an illusion, 
What happens in end-stage addiction, you don't even get the happiness you got in early addiction. So you're eating the donuts and you're still feeling unhappy, but now you're monstrously driven by the field of addiction. You're actually taken over. There's no light of God left. You're just being orchestrated by thoughts um, of anti-life to just eat donuts and eat donuts and eat donuts and just to kill what's left of the life form. Or it might be to drink and drink and drink until uh, uh, death occurs, or unconscious suicide occurs, or, or even, you know, uh, for uh, love addicts, you know, uh, uh, they, they get desperate that a person is the source of life. And if that person threatens to leave or do anything or goes with someone else, you feel like you want to jump off a bridge. Because the, you think that the high you got from that person can never get from anywhere else. It comes from that person or that donut type of food or from that glass. Where, the, where, does, this, where does this concept of feeling the void come, comes from? You know, is that, where does it come from in, 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 in the first place? You know, that feeling of emptiness, and I need something to fill me, that, that feeling of emptiness. Like now, when I found God of my own understanding, yes. I absolutely don't need to eat. Sometimes I feel like I don't need to eat, drink, or do anything, really, and I'm okay. Um, because I just feel that, that, that never-ending love. Mm -hmm. But where, where is that first kind of concept of emptiness that we feel you know, the second borns or whatever you want to call us, that we feel that different to other people, that we feel that void in the first place? Well, it, you know, I would say everyone's born with, this, with their ego. I mean, you wouldn't be born here if you didn't have an ego, not in this place. Um, so there, there's a level of karma, belief systems, preordained, which attracts you to the, to the family and the origins and the situation you're in. So that, that t you know, the... If you looked at the past lives and the level of consciousness that you get incarnated at, you know, like why is someone born to the royal family and someone born in Africa with no parents, you know? So it's like, so those belief systems are pulling one in to a circumstance. And the level of belief systems or, and the, the, the density of the baggage and the karma will then create a feeling of sep separation you know, right from the start. Like, I really felt from, from childhood I didn't feel right. Mm. You know, it wasn't like my parents did to me. Right from the start, there was something wrong. Mm. I didn't feel connected. So I had, you know, I, you know, Hawkins says on average an advanced spiritual seeker has 15 past lifetimes, which you check out. So, like, if I'd been a bank robber, a property robber, uh, and a thug, just be, you know, just hammering people on the head with a club, for a few lifetimes or whatever it was I was doing. You know, I'm sort of coming in here with quite heavy baggage. And so there's this feeling of I'm like... <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my parents might be like, they might discipline with the club or something, but, you know, it will mirror um, the, um, the baggage. So my feeling of not feeling right or this emptiness or this void feeling or this feeling of self-hatred or... So I need to do something because I don't feel right, it will be different depending on the level of baggage. The thing with belief systems, which is quite interesting, is, you know, belief systems are very, very advanced and they can create all kinds of experiences. Like, uh, you've got states like being frozen uh, or feeling the void or empty. Um, and uh, Hawkins said something really interesting. If you believe... If you have the belief system that the truth is void, then you actually go and experience something void, uh, if that makes sense. Because you don't, but the truth is that, but that, that comes out of the belief system because the truth is not void of love. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense. Uh, so you can't have, you know, that's not the ultimate state, is nothingness without love. So, uh, so belief systems can actually create very advanced states, and you have to dissolve these beliefs, uh, these belief systems, um, feeling empty, unconnected, uh, frozen, uh, dissociated. These are all different, uh, different, if you like, collectives of belief systems and repressed feelings, and they can all be released to get to these more divine states. I'm not, I mean, my eyebrows might have moved there because we might, might have been, 
we might have like been misinterpreting the word void. <gasps> there is the thing of uh, sometimes if you release attachments as a spiritual path, but you release love as an attachment, you go to the emptiness or the void or the infinite, an infinite state uh, without the abs with the absence of love, a kind of an emptiness. So that can be that's a, that can be quite a spiritual state, but it's not the absolute state. Um, but in terms of void, if you're meaning the void of an addict mm. that's just empty and wanting something, uh, that, that that okay. So addiction, uh, addiction, and I agree with uh, what's said uh, in certain twelve-step groups. To be an addict means uh, you've only got one ticket. You know, if you're an extreme, not, not someone who's normal, but you either have to find God or a spiritual experience or the addiction gets worse over time uh, and, and drags you down. So, now some people might be very spiritual and that's different, but if you're an addict and you haven't got any spiritual experience, it takes you darker and darker. So that void means that your pathways, you have to find, you have to surrender and find something spiritual to counteract that energy. You've lost the... Um, You've lost um, the ability to be uh, to just have half a biscuit and never have to do spiritual work for the rest of your life or have no spirituality in you. So, does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that answered? Yeah. Yeah. Craving. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about craving. Um, I mean, the way I deal with cravings, you know, the the addict energy of craving is. Whenever I want something, I sit with it until it passes. And this goes for biscuits, goes for buying things on Amazon, it goes for shopping, it goes for wanting to call that girl, you know, whatever the urge is. If you have to do it now, for me, if I have, if I have a craving to do something now, the opportunity is to sit with it until I'm in a position of neutrality. And every time I want to do it again, like if I want to buy something on Amazon, uh, and this really saved me a lot of money, it's a tip, you know, so it's like, okay, I want to go on Amazon and buy something. Okay, you're not going to buy it today, you're going to sit with that feeling of cravingness until it's gone, and maybe tomorrow if you want to buy it, you might buy it. And then tomorrow if I, I play a game, so the next day, you still want to buy that phone, just sit with the energy of wanting to buy it until it's gone. And then at the end, when you've sat through all that craving energy for wanting to do something to feel better, doesn't really matter what it is, whether it's donuts, buy a new iPhone, whatever it is. Then you find you don't no longer need it. You go, I'm actually quite happy with the phone I've got, you know, or actually I'm not hungry, I don't need anything right now. So you get to this place of neutrality or, or fullness, which is a much higher vibration. So you're, you're shattering the illusion that you need to act on the craving energy, which just reinforces the illusory idea and, and, and makes the whole bigger.